In this video, I'll show you the complete on-page SEO checklist to optimize your blog posts for SEO and more so for AI search in 2024 and beyond so you can increase the search visibility with an area that you have full control. The first checklist item is to know the target keyword and the search intent. Ultimately, your blog post is written around a target keyword and to fulfill a search intent. And that's true no matter if we're optimizing for traditional SEO or the future AI search. The searcher is looking for an answer, so whether it's for information, advice or buying product or service. So this is exactly what you need to include in your blog post in order to satisfy that search intent. So if you have an existing blog articles to optimize, first identify what's the target keyword because that's the most important checklist item. If you don't know how to do a keyword research, check out my other video. For example, assume we have a target keyword gym intimidation. One of the easiest ways to identify search intents is to simply do a Google search for that keyword and to look through the top search results on Google because Google will often run results that can provide good answers for the searchers. So you can see from the top round of results, they are mainly about how to overcome gym intimidation, push through gym anxiety, face gym fear. And that means searchers looking for advice on how to overcome gym intimidation. And this is what we need to cover in the blog post content. The next thing is to take note of the keywords that are used in these top round of results. As you can see, gym intimidations is also ranked for blog titles with keywords, gym intimidation, gym anxiety, gym fear, which means Google treats them as the same search term and so they are related keywords. So take notes to this as we're gonna use them later. Sometimes this is also when you want to review and pick a better target keyword. So which one has the highest popularity and a lower or medium keyword difficulty so you can stand a chance to rank. If you haven't subscribed to any pay tool, you can easily check that using Google Trends. So gym anxiety is the most popular keyword among these keywords and you can further check the keyword difficulty score and design. But let's just assume we'll keep going for now. The next thing is to optimize the content relevance, which means how we can improve the content so to better match the search query. So assume this is our existing blog articles, how to overcome gym intimidation. I just took it from somewhere else and it is currently ranked for the keyword gym intimidation with position around 60 something. So first of all is to increase the depth of the content by incorporating the relevant content that the searchers need to know about. Google loves comprehensive content, not thin content, which means the more content you write about that keyword or topic, the higher chance you can rank. So try to think about from a searcher's standpoint, what content you expect to know about this topic. For example, besides the tips to overcome the gym intimidation, I can also mention what is gym intimidation? What are the size of gym intimidation? Again, you can also look through the top results and analyze the content and aim to do better than these articles. For example, they also mention the reason or triggers for gym intimidation. Alternatively, you can also use the plugin SEO Matter in one click to check the topic outline that they use, and then we can cover the same in the article. You can also use the tool people also ask. So type in your target keywords and see what are the relevant questions people are also asking about these topic. So you can cover that as well to increase the depth. Although the content length is not a ranking factor, but that indirectly implies the content depth. Try to aim at least 1,500 to 2,000 words. You can also use the server SEO extension to check the content length of the top ranked results just to get an idea. And second, that is to improve the context to match the search query. Google is no longer only using keywords to rank pages, but the context that you're giving in the blog. And this is when the long tail and LSI keywords can help to improve that. So long tail keywords are keywords with three to five words. So keywords, gym, intimidation statistic is one of them. LSI keywords, latent thematic indexing keywords are keywords that are conceptually related to your target keyword. So from what we have seen, gym anxiety is one of them. So to find this keyword, go back to the keyword research process and identify a list of related keywords that are often associated with your target keyword. The more you can include these keywords or topics, the better context you're providing to Google, the better match to the search query. Besides, you can also get more ideas by using this free keyword density checker to check what are those top keywords that often used for those top ranked articles. You can simply input any URL and it will pull the top keywords break down by one word or two words, etc. For example, for this top result, you can see anxiety, workout, feeling comfortable are keywords that often use it. So we can analyze four to five of these top random results and make notes to those highly occurred keywords and include them naturally in our article. Our next checklist item is to place our target keyword strategically. Again, you shouldn't just keyword stuffing your target keyword everywhere in your blog.
stock because that's not gonna make a huge difference. And simply increasing the keyword density of the target keyword is no longer a good tactic as well. But still, we want to make sure our target keywords included throughout the article in order to improve the content relevance. First is your blog's title, which is also wrapped with the SEO page title tag. It's what Google will crawl and get a sense of what the blog article is about. It is a very important ranking factor. So make sure you have your target keyword included. Try to place them near to the front position as near as possible so Google can crawl that keyword more quickly and so the searchers, they're gonna see it first. A bonus tip here is to make it click worthy as well. So I also like to use this headline analyzer by Monster Insights so you can include whatever headline and it will return score. It tracks if you include any power words, emotional words, common words. If you use WordPress, you can also install its plugin and check the score on the go. So back to our example, we can change this to something like gym intimidation, 10 proven ways to overcome gym anxiety. So it is much more catchy now. And our area is the head attack. So the H1, H2, and H3 tags. And the H1 is the most important. So these tags are used to better structure content. And Google will often crawl these headings to further confirm the content relevance. These are the areas you should include the target keyword as well as the related keywords that we've mentioned. So make sure you put them in a natural way. If you're using WordPress, the H1 tag will be the article title by default and will be taken care of. Again, you can also double check it using the Chrome extension. As for H2, so these are like the subheadings. They should be keyword targeted for other related keywords. And then underneath, you can have the H3 tags that further elaborate the ideas. So back to the examples, you can see the H2 tags are definitely not optimized enough and then not grabbing the most important information. So we can include more keywords in each point subheadings and make sure they are webbed with H2. You can easily do that if you're using WordPress. Next, of course, is the body content. So again, do not keyword stuff, but to make sure your target keywords appears naturally. Not too much, not too less. I would say for a typical 1,500 words article, probably five to six times is very enough because Google is gonna use different factors, signals to determine the content relevance. Next is the meta description. So meta description is used to summarize the page content and will appear in the search result page as well. Include your target keywords and related keywords to make it engaging for the searchers to click. Although meta description is not a ranking factor, but with a higher click rate, it gives Google good signals. Next is to include the target keyword in the image alt text. Sometimes searchers may not only use web search, but image search. So including the target keywords in the image where they make sense can greatly increase the chance of your blog being seen by the users as they search. If you're using WordPress, you can easily add the image alt tags as you insert the image from the image library. Another area is the URL slug. So this is the part of the URL that shows after your domain. You should include your target keyword here because Google will all then crawl the URL first to get an initial idea of what this page is about. So back to our example, it's good that it has included the keyword gym intimidation in a URL slug. A bonus is if you're using WordPress, so you can download the plugin RandMath. It's a free plugin. You can simply type your target keyword and it will return score to you based on how many best practices you have followed. I would say try to aim for a score with at least 70, so making sure you have followed most of the best practices we have covered. But we are not done yet, so here comes your next checklist item. User experience, because very likely Google will weigh more on this in the future AI search experience. So there are three things you can check. First, have you added a table of content? It not only make it easier for the users to navigate, but also helps Google to identify different chapters for your blog posts and present them as jumbling on the search result page or increase the chance of your articles being referenced in the AI chats. Second thing, try to add more images in your blog alongside the content so to keep the user engaged. Keep the file size low so you're not risking high loading speed and adding the alternate tags we have already mentioned. Third, make sure it's mobile friendly. The best way is to check on your mobile device to see how the experience is. If any layout issues or being distracted, Google used to have a mobile friendly testing tool but it's no longer available. So I have included another tool link in the description. The next checklist item is to add internal links. If you don't know what are internal links, so these are the links that point to other page under the same domain. They help Google to understand the site structure better and the signal relevance and context to the topic. So there are two types of internal links that you can add. First is at least add two to three in content internal links in your article and point them to your other relevant blog pages under your site if you have. A key is to make sure they're conceptually relevant and to use a relevant anchor tag to build that link. 
For example, I can add an internal link to personal progress. Another type of internal link is to link from your other highly ranked pages or older blog posts to this article because usually Google have the crawling history and they are gonna crawl these pages much faster. And so this can help to speed up the overall crawling process for this article. Besides internal links, also add external links as they give the signals to Google how this blog is related to other websites with similar content. So these also help Google to understand better on the content relevance. Back to this example, we can add a link to an external site for any statistic or report related to gym intimidation just to make sure when you add an external link, they are open in a new window so you can still keep your visitor on your site. The next item is the schema markups. This is a bit technical, but don't be scared. I will show you how to generate these markups with tools. So schema markups is like a set of codings with standard format added to your web page so search engine can better understand the content. So it is purely for search engines or machines. And why this matters? Because with the AI search experience coming, so these schema markups become a data layer that large language model of Gemini or Google SGE can access to understand the context faster. If you're using RankMath, the WordPress plugin, then this has been handled for you. But if you don't, I always recommend the markup schema markup generator. So just pick the blog posting schema type and add the relevant information. And the code will be generated on the right hand side. So copy and paste back to your blog post using the HTML editor view. The next checklist item is to add the author's name with file. So with the influx of low quality AI content, Google is now cleaning up the space. It's taking more seriously on the trustworthiness of the website. So adding the author's name with bio can help you to build some credibility. So Google knows the article is written or reviewed it by real humans. So make sure you add that in your blog. If you need the complete checklist for these on-page SEO items, you can download from the link below and watch my keyword research tutorial to learn how to identify some good keywords for your blog articles. See you soon.